some of the people can be half right part of the time. All of the people can be part right some of the time. But all of the people can't be all right all of the time. <laughs> T.S. Eliot said that. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So what does it mean to crossfade? Well, if you're a DJ like J period, to crossfade means you probably start thinking about that horizontal toggle on the bottom of a traditional DJ mixer. And the crossfader allows you to move back and forth fluidly and seamlessly between the music that's on input one and the music that's on input two. You can juggle between both inputs keeping them both alive inside of the mix. But we're not here to talk to you about the crossfader necessarily as just a technological tool. We want to talk to you about the crossfader as a new kind of metaphor for a new kind of social thinking. The crossfader as a new kind of social action. The crossfader as a way of rethinking social justice. So a crossfader manifesto might go something like this. To crossfade is to combine without erasing. To crossfade is to embrace the multiple, not the singular. The both and, not the either or. To crossfade is to understand that all existence is coexistence. To crossfade is to cue up one reality on your headphones while you're fading another reality out into the speakers. To crossfade is not to listen for centers. To crossfade is to listen for the edges and the borders. To crossfade is to listen for those places, those little details, those singular points where things connect and isolate those points. To crossfade is to embrace the migrant, is to embrace the other, it's to make the foreign familiar. Or in the words of an OG crossfader, Bob Dylan, so don't, so don't, fear don't fear if you hear, if you hear a foreign sound to your ear. A foreign sound in your ear. It's all right, Ma. I'm only sighing. So I point these things out, brothers and sisters, so that you and I will know the importance of being in complete unity with each other, harmony with each other, and not letting the men maneuver us into fighting one another. As long as we practice brotherhood among ourselves, and then others who want to practice brotherhood with us, we're for that. Now to tell the story of the crossfader, we gotta go back to at least 1977, to a British engineer by the name of Richard Wadman, who worked for a tech company called Citronic. And Wadman was the guy who invented the first DJ mixer with a crossfader, with a horizontal fader. Now there have been DJ mixers that existed before Richard Wadman, but they were all vertical sliders and twisting knobs. It was Wadman with the SMP-101 who put the horizontal crossfader on the mixer. And because he was an engineer, his main goal was to find a solution to an energy crisis. Very simply, how do you sustain flow and current as you move from one source to another? How do you sustain flow and current when you go from left to right to left to right to left to right again? So Wadman said, it's easy, we gotta make it horizontal. We gotta make sure the crossfader is horizontal. In other words, we gotta de-verticalize the slide. And when Wadman de-verticalized the slide, we believe he de-verticalized the world. And now, all of us have potential to be crossfaders. The thing that we are challenged to do is to keep this movement moving. Your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. Cause it's your man, Black Thought, on the MIC, and Jake Perry is on break. 
But now at the very same time that Richard Wadman in England was coming up with the crossfader, a hip hop DJ in the South Bronx by the name of Grandmaster Flash was inventing his own version of the crossfader. And just like Wadman, he was an engineer, but he was an engineer who played records. And Flash was a big fan of a guy named Pete Jones, who was a DJ in Manhattan. And Jones was famous on the club scene for being able to take two copies of the same record and at a nightclub put those copies uh, on his decks and cut back and forth between them to extend the rhythmic break, the rhythmic percussion break of those songs to keep the crowd moving and dancing without ever losing the beat. And Flash loved this, but he wanted to take it to the next level. So he started rigging and messing with his own mixer because he was an engineer. And he created his own version of the crossfader that allowed him to create what he called the quick mix theory and move seamlessly between two copies of the same record and create new collages, new sonic Frankensteins without ever losing the beat. What Flash created with the crossfader was the beat science of connection. For him, what mattered most was the electric currency of not losing the beat and taking that beat on an adventure on the wheels of steel. He say, 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 one for the trouble, two for the time. Come on, girls, let's rock that. Bad, bad, Freddy told me everybody's side. DJ spinning, I said, my, my. Flash is back, flash is back, flash is fast. Flash is cool, Francois, c'est pas, flash ain't no do. He say, one for the trouble, two for the time. Come on, girls, let's rock that. <laughs> J period. One, two, three, ah! Uh. Okay, party people in the house. Now, what you might have noticed is that the crossfader is also about something else. The art of the scratch. Now, you don't need a crossfader to scratch a record. But what the crossfader did was it allowed the scratch of a record to become its own art, its own science. Because the crossfader opens and closes opens and closes, opens and closes, and it's in those openings and closures that scratching can be taken to the next level as an art. And the crossfader allowed DJs to develop entire routines, entire choreographies of gestures, of movements, and invent new kinds of scratches like the RoboCut beat juggle and the Transformer scratch, whole new ways of converting sound and noise into new meaning. Because what the DJ does with the crossfader is he puts holes into sounds. And he puts holes into sounds so we can hear better, so we can actually hear the sounds louder. As Jean-Michel Basquiat said in his own visual work, I cross out words so you will see them more. The DJ scratches out words so we hear them more. The crossfader allows the scratch to go from static to signal, to go from negative to positive from erasure and absence into presence. It allows the scratch to go from a crossing out into a making of. The crossfader allowed the scratch to take a phrase as simple and as innocent as, oh yeah, and turn it into a five minute long exclamation that you could dance to. Now, 
What the crossfader also allows us to do is understand how different parts are combined to create something new. So you might think of the DJ as a connection hunter who starts with one piece of music like this one from the moments, Love on a Two-Way Street. Feel free to lean in. And lost it on a lonely highway. Love on a two-way street. So that's one part. And lost it on a lonely highway. But then you might want to add a beat to it. From Isaac Hayes. And just like that, those two parts are combined to create something new, a Jay-Z and Alicia Keys track built on those two parts. Two become one without ever ceasing to be two. You might start with a little Ahmad Jamal, a song called Ghetto Child. And as beautiful as it is, I might get the urge to mess around with it, punch it, change its shape, change its time signature, change its tempo, rewrite it, recompose it, yet it's still it. And if you're Kanye West as a producer, you then throw a beat under it and you get this so that two, again, become one without ever ceasing to be two. There are times because all alchemy needs a little need light. You might yeah. start with some Bobby Caldwell. So, so. <laughs> then if you're common, there is a light you might figure out a way to make the light shine on you too. I never knew a la 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 a la like this. Two become one without ever ceasing being two. I never knew a la 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 a la like this. Gotta be something for me to write this. So we can think of crossfading also as a kind of, of writing, of playing with texts and rewriting and recombining, like taking this track from the bubblegum machine. And then thinking, I'm going to combine this text with a beat from Joe Farrell and seeing what we get. But where do you come in? Right there. But then because we're coming here tonight, coming to you from Los Angeles, coming from Southern California, got to throw in some Herb Alpert right on top. So that three become one without ever ceasing to be three. J period. Now, there's some rules to being a crossfader. Number one, you have to have a relationship with the archives, which is to say, if you want to dig through the crates, you got to have the crates. You got to know your sources. You got to know your history. Crossfading involves historical consciousness. You must know the past to invent the future. Number two, to be a crossfader means you must develop the art of listening. Listening as in not hearing as passive, but listening as active, knowing what to listen for. How do you find those moments to mix and cut and scratch and fade? Number three, as a crossfader, you develop the art of finding the fit, of knowing when to enter a conversation, when to be quiet, when to be silent, but then when to speak and when to come in. How do you create a new dialogue out of disparate voices? And number four, to 
be a crossfader means that you are always moving the crowd, right? Which in, is DJ speak. But in the larger social speak, moving the crowd is making a community, creating a public, developing new ways for us to be together socially so that new communities are born. One, two, three. Now when we talk about race and ethnicity and cultural identity in the history of the United States, for example, the master metaphor is the metaphor of the melting pot, yeah? We've all heard this story. The melting pot as the great symbol of diversity of the United States. Well, the melting pot actually comes from the title of a play from 1903 called The Melting Pot, written by Israel Zangwill. And this was a play that told the story of an immigrant to the United States who's a composer, and he wants to create the ultimate symphony that represents America. And that symphony for him is a musical representation of a melting pot, where all of these different cultures and ethnicities and races dissolve into one single American symphony. And much later on, a guy named Paul Whiteman, a jazz composer, in a film called The King of Jazz, did a vignette called The Melting Pot of Music, where he literalized this metaphor. And in the film, stands atop a big cauldron, and as the jazz band plays, all of these people representing different ethnic and racial groups march into the cauldron, and through the magic of jazz, he stirs them together, and out they come, all wearing the same clothes, all looking the same, one singular American race, all produced by the melting pot of music. We're talking about the crossfader because we believe it's time for a new metaphor. We need to replace the melting with the mix. We need to replace the harmonies of the symphony with the juggle of the crossfader. Now, one local Southern California hip-hop hero from the early days of hip-hop named the Egyptian Lover posed this question many years ago. It's become a classic hip-hop question. What is a DJ if he can't scratch? Now, that's a question that is about skill, right? Can the DJ scratch or not? And you're not a DJ if you can't scratch. But we think we need to actually extend this question now. It's not about can you or cannot scratch, not just about that, but it's about what can you scratch to? Right? Uh, in the 21st century, we believe we need to add some things to that question. What is a DJ if he can't scratch to a Mexican ranchera? What is a DJ if he can't scratch to Brazilian samba? What is a DJ if he can't scratch to Cambodian rock and roll? In the 21st century, in the age of deportations and drones, in the age of drones and deportations, in the age of mass migration, where over 230 million people are on the move every single day, moving across homelands, moving across militarized borders that are designed to allow money and goods to cross, but not people. In this age of the undocumented, of the mass undocumented, we need a new way of understanding the world. We need to start thinking like DJs. Which is to say that the challenge of the DJ is the challenge of us all. How do we sustain a mix? And what are we as a society if we cannot sustain a mix? How do we ma maintain archives? What are we as a society if we cannot maintain our archives, if we do not have access to historical consciousness and think through the past as a way to think about the present? What are we as a society if we do not know how to live in the cuts and how to prosper in the fades? And even more importantly, how to help those people who are caught struggling in the cuts, struggling in the fades? What are we as a society if we do not know how to create, not from the centers, but from the edges, from the places where we connect with each other. And so the last question that we want to leave you all with tonight, as you go home, doesn't matter if you're a musician or an aspiring DJ, if you're an educator, if you are a museum director, if you work on policy, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a lobbyist, 
Whatever you are, we want you to go home thinking about this one question. What is a society if it can't crossfade? That's J period. Rest in peace, Wanda Coleman. There is a land that I have heard about so far across the seas.